So for the last couple of days, we've been looking at Newton's second law situations. We've looked at some ones that involve vectors and vector components. We've looked at elevators okay, uh, and kind of other single mass situations. And most of the time, what we're going to deal with is single R, single mass situations. This is what we call a system situation. It has multiple masses. Right? What we have to understand about a multiple mass or system situation is that all parts of the system have the same acceleration. They may not have the same forces acting on them, but the whole system accelerates as a whole with the same magnitude. Magnitude, if possible, for the vectors to be different. Okay. For example, if I had a pulley okay, and something hanging over the pulley, one part of the system will accelerate towards the pulley and the other part of the system will fall and accelerate downwards. But their accelerations will be the same magnitude. No part of a system can accelerate at a different rate than the rest of it or the system will break. I mean, if you're looking at this very simple system here, there's no way for the 10 kilogram and 20 kilogram system to accelerate our parts to accelerate at different rates. Either the rope breaks or the 20 kilogram mass runs into the 1 kilogram mass. Right? Last time I checked, that doesn't happen. Okay? Now, granted, it was a while ago that I checked, but I'm pretty sure that that's still valid. Okay? Um, is it possible for the 20 kilogram mass to catch up to the 10 kilogram mass in a non-Newton uh, second law situation? It is. That's what causes it, like a semi-trailer to jackknife. Okay, if anyone's ever seen what that looks like. Okay, if the if the tractor, the truck stops suddenly, the trailer keeps going. It's actually a Newton's first law situation. The trailer keeps trying to follow its inertia, which is to keep moving forward at whatever speed it was being towed at, and it just tries to pass the truck. Okay? It pivots around the hitch and will come around and smash into the side of the truck and it'll end up in the ditch. Okay? Um, you see it happen, happen often when trailers are much heavier than the vehicles towing them. Okay? So you sometimes see people on the highway and they're pulling a travel trailer and their truck looks like a V. Okay, because the back end of the truck is practically on the ground because it's way too much trailer. Okay, if that trailer starts to sway, like the wind starts to blow on the side of it, it's more massive than its tow vehicle and it'll start to move and those vibrations or movements will be transferred to the tow vehicle. It'll start to do this and then it'll just come around. Okay, because the person will panic, hit the brakes and the trailer will just keep on trucking. Okay, and it'll just come right around the side. Uh, so you often see like, you know, big boats laying in the ditch with their truck that was towing it because it just comes around and smack and takes it right off, off the road. Okay? That's not this situation. This is the situation where we're getting it moving. If I pull on this rope, and this rope is like tight when I first start, which it is, okay, these two masses accelerate together. Okay? So if they accelerate together, can I draw them together? In some situations, yes. Okay? If the question's asking about the whole system, then I can do that. But if it's talking about this box has these forces acting on it, and this box has these forces acting on it, then I might have to deal with the parts individually, then combine. Okay? But that's kind of what we're looking at with these systems. So with these two blocks, they're made of identical material. Okay? They're connected by a light rope on a level surface. Okay? An applied force of 55 newtons to the right causes the blocks to accelerate. While in motion, the magnitude of the force on the block system is 44.1 newtons. Calculate the acceleration of the blocks. Okay, everything they've given to me in that question is about the entire system. Can I draw it as a 30 kilogram mass? Yes, because it's acting as a 30 kilogram mass, okay? Had they said the force of friction on the 20 kilogram mass is this much, then I would have had to isolate everything okay, and treat it separately. So what we want to try to do in any system situation is get all the forces figured out so that we can get to the point where we can deal with the whole system. Okay? If we can't, then we can figure out information about one mass. If I can figure out its acceleration, I know that's the acceleration of the other mass as well. 
and it can apply to both because they're part of the same system. In this case, we've got 55 newtons to the right, we've got 44.1 newtons to the left. Okay. Can we calculate our net force? Yeah, we, we certainly can. So it's going to be 10.9 newtons to the right. Okay. Can I calculate my acceleration? So acceleration is F net 10.9 over mass 30. Okay. So we should get uh, 0.3. Three six meters per second squared. To the right. Okay. Everybody alright with how that one works? That's as simple as a system question gets. Okay? They give us everything about the whole system and didn't make us isolate anything. Okay? The next step in this would be they tell me that the force of friction on the 20 kilogram mass is X number of newtons. Calculate the tension in the rope between the boxes. Now I have to break it out. Okay? I still know that would apply to both boxes. Since I know the mass of both boxes, could I calculate the net force on each one of them? Good, right? I know their mass and I know their acceleration. So then I can break up a system into its individual parts and treat each individual part as though it's its own thing. Okay? And that's all right too, as long as I remember this part. All parts of the system accelerate at the same rate. Okay? That's probably the most helpful piece of information about the systems there is. Okay. Why don't you try number one? And I'll give you a few minutes on number one, see how you do, and then we'll go through it together. So we've got two buckets, and they're filled with nails, and they're hung one above the other. Right? So we've got like the first bucket, and then the second bucket. Okay. Each bucket is five kilograms. The tension in the rope connecting the buckets is 60 newtons. Calculate the acceleration of the buckets. Okay, so can I calculate the acceleration of them combined? No, because I don't know what the force is pulling up on the first bucket, okay? But I do know the force pulling up on the second bucket, and I know the force pulling down on the second bucket. What is it? It's gravity, right? So I can calculate that, and I can know that down here, this force of gravity is 49.05 newtons. Okay, well, can I find my net force on the second bucket? So this is one of those examples where I separate the system and I find out what I can about one part of it and then I apply that to the whole system because I know the acceleration of this bucket is the acceleration of the other bucket and both buckets and the whole system. Okay? So F net is going to be 60 plus negative 49.05 so that's going to be 10.95 newtons up. And now I can calculate the acceleration of just this bucket. So I'm dividing by how much mass? Five. If I was doing the whole system, I'd be dividing by 10. Okay, so 10.95 divided by five. Okay, so we should get 2.2 meters per second squared up. And that is for both buckets for the whole system. Can you like, really easily calculate how much force is being used on the second one? Or the first bucket? Because it would have to be double? Yeah. Yes. But then we make an assumption. There's nothing else going on. We have to, it's better to always go with what we know for sure. Now granted, this is a pretty simple situation. That would be a pretty safe assumption. But we don't always know that. Okay. Now, here's the one that's going to make you think. So we're back to the first example. Okay. 
everything still applies that applied to the first situation. Okay? There's 55 newtons worth of pulling force from the hand. Okay? There's 44.1 newtons worth of total friction in the system. But now, they want you to calculate the tension in the rope that connects the 20 kilogram box to the 10 kilogram box, knowing that the force of friction on the 10 kilogram box is 14.7 newtons. Okay, see what you can do with that. Right. You may have to choose which box to use to solve this. You can choose either box. Can actually solve it with the 20 kilogram box or with the 10 kilogram box. It might be a little less work with the 10. Okay. I've just kind of been watching your faces a little bit, and I think part of it is because I told you it's actually easier to use box one to calculate the tension in the string that connects the two boxes. And I think a bunch of you are going, that force doesn't even act on box one. Okay, because I'm, I'm seeing people that are, they just look like kind of deer, they got the deer in the headlights look like, okay, I don't even know where to go here. This is where that whole visualization piece really comes into play, right? I'm gonna draw the free body diagram for both boxes. Okay? I think that'll help you kind of get started here. So, for the 10 kilogram box, Obviously, there's our 55 Newton force from the hand. It's pulling directly on the 10 kilogram box. They also tell us that there's 14.7 Newtons worth of friction on the 10 kilogram box. What else is pulling on the 10 kilogram box? The 20 kilogram box, and how is it pulling on that box? Through the string. This is why, and I mean, not that any of you have done this yet, because you probably just got your driver's licenses a year ago, but you probably haven't pulled a trailer yet. But it's a lot harder to like get going towing a trailer than it is when you just have your truck, okay, or your car, or whatever you're towing with, okay, because the trailer pulls on you. You pull on it, and it pulls on you, okay? It's what makes it hard. It's why you don't pull a 35-foot uh, fifth-wheel trailer with a Honda Civic. In addition to the fact I don't know where you put the hitch, but, okay, like, it just, you don't do it. It's not enough. There's not enough there, okay? It's too much weight to pull with something that small, okay? So whenever you're attached to something else, Yes, you pull on it, but according to Newton's third law, it pulls on you in response. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when I pull on, when the 10 kilogram box pulls on the 20 kilogram box, the 20 kilogram box pulls on the 10 kilogram box. So this is the force we're looking for. The force of tension in the string between the boxes. Okay. Now, remember the other thing that we have here. We know the acceleration of the boxes. We calculated it in the first question. 0.36 meters per second squared forwards. I'm going to give you a little bit more time to see if you can get it from there. We have to draw the other box. the two forces acting on the 20 kilogram box. You have enough information to calculate the force of friction on the 20 kilogram box because you know the total and you know how much of it is pulling on the first box. So you can figure out how much is left for the second box. Okay, And then the only other force acting on this box is the one you're trying to find. Okay? Its acceleration is the same as box A's. So, 
both ways to figure it out here. So we'll look at um, the 10 kilogram box first. Okay. Can I calculate the net force on the 10 kilogram box? Yes, I can. I know it's mass, and I know it's acceleration. So I can calculate the net force right away. All right. So the F net on the 10 kilogram box is 10 times 0.36, okay, which is 3.6 newtons forward. Okay, the other way to get F net for the 10 kilogram box is to add all the forces. The one I don't know, plus the force of friction, plus the applied force from the hand. So if I want to find the force tension, I know the other three, I just have to go F net minus the force of friction minus the applied force will equal the force of resistance in the string. So that'll be positive 3.6 minus negative 14.7 minus 55. Okay, gives me negative 37 newtons or 37 newtons backwards on the 10 kilogram mass. When I do this with the 20 kilogram mass, it's not going to be backwards, it's going to be forwards because for the 20 kilogram mass, that force pulls forward. Tension actually pulls both ways. Okay? Like if you're looking at it from the point of view of the rope or the cable, the cable is just being stretched. That's how, that's how tense the cable is. It only becomes a pulling force when you start looking at the perspective of what box. Okay? If I'm on this end pulling this way, it's that way for me. If I'm on the other end, it's the other way for me. So the fact that they didn't specify from which box you we were looking at this from means that either answer would be acceptable. Right. Yeah. In a lot of cases, um, tension cannot have a vector unless it says what is the force exerted by the rope on mass 20, on the 20 kilogram mass. And then it's not asking for tension, it's asking what's the rope doing to the 20 kilogram mass? It's pulling it forward with 36.7 newtons or 37. Does that make sense? So it's about wording. It's tricky. Okay. So if it asks for tension, you don't have to put a vector on. But if it says what force is the rope pulling with on this mass, that's now a force. Okay. Now it's okay. It's this direction. All right. For the 20 kilogram mass, the first thing I have to do is calculate the force of friction. So I actually have to do an extra calculation, which is why I said it's easier to do it with the 10 kilogram mass because you already have all the stuff. Right, so I have to go 44.1 minus 14.7 to get the remaining friction that is acting on the 20 kilogram mass. Okay, so we got 29.4 newtons worth of friction here. Okay, we can calculate the net force that is acting on the 20 kilogram mass the same way we did with the 10 kilogram mass. Okay, uh, so 20 times 0.36 is gonna be 7.2 newtons. So my net force is 7.2. Okay, um, for my 20 kilogram mass, F net is the force of friction plus the tensional force. Okay, um, so when I find the, the tensional force, I just subtract friction. So that'll be 7.2 minus negative 29.4, which lo and behold gives me 37 newtons again, but this time forwards. All right. Does that require you to really see inside of a situation? Okay. When we get to systems, yeah, visualization is key. Okay. We really have to have a good understanding of why things do what they do. Pulleys the system. I'll give you a minute to write that one down, and we'll talk about what we do with pulleys. Okay, I've got a 35 kilogram mass on the right, a 25 kilogram mass on the left, hung over a pulley. If I let them go, what's going to happen? Exactly. Okay, the 35 kilogram mass will fall, the 25 kilogram mass will rise. Why? Because 35 is heavier than 25. What makes something heavy? Gravity. Exactly. What's the force that's driving this whole system? 
What's the force that's resisting this whole system? Yeah. Okay. This pulley effectively places gravity in opposition with itself. If these were both 35 kilogram masses and I let them go, what would happen? They would just sit there, right? It'd be perfectly balanced. Okay, there would be no unbalanced forces. There would be a Newton's first law situation and nothing would happen. They would both sit there. But because they're not balanced, okay, this one, this force of gravity, is bigger than this force of gravity. Okay, so if we're looking at what those forces of gravity are, so we got 343.35 Newtons. Okay, and we got 245.25 Newtons. Can I simplify this diagram? Is this a system? Can I draw it like this? try to accelerate 60 kilograms worth of mass. Right. When this thing, when, it, when we let it go, the bigger mass falls, the smaller mass rises, but they do it at the same rate because one is pulling the other. Well, actually, they're pulling on each other, okay? but one is driving the system because it's heavier. Okay? But they accelerate at the same rate. The whole system has to accelerate at the same rate, and it's because there's a net force pulling on the entire system. Everybody okay with what I'm saying there so far? Okay. So I've got 35.35 newtons down. I've got 245.25 newtons down, but that's not really a good way to draw it because it's hard to visualize the two masses individually with the force of the other one acting on each other. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, here's the system. The system's being pulled one way by this much force and the other way by this much force, because that's really what's going on. Even though the other way is the same way, both down, okay? but it's opposing. Okay? When I let this go, does it fall at 9.81 meters per second squared? Absolutely not. Okay, I mean, if you had um, like let's say a, a pulley system like this, right? And you're standing at the edge of like a cliff. Okay. If you if there's mass on the on the other end of that pulley and you grab onto the rope and go off, do you fall or do you descend slowly? Well, I certainly would choose grabbing onto the rope over stepping off, without grabbing the rope. Because if I don't grab the rope, I'm going to fall at 9.81 meters per second squared. If I grab the rope, whatever mass is on the other side, its weight pulls against my weight, and I don't fall as fast. It's the whole purpose of a pulley. A pulley is basically just a lever. Okay? It's a force multiplier. Okay? If you've got a really big, heavy mass, and you try to lift it, and you can't, one of the first things we think of doing is, Look up, oh, I could get a pulley. I could like lean into that. I could use my weight against that weight, and I might be able to lift it. Okay? Because all a pulley is is a lever. Okay? So all we're saying here is there's a force on this side going one way, okay? pulling the system clockwise, and there's a, a force on the other side pulling the system counterclockwise. But the force clockwise is bigger. So the system's going to rotate clockwise. Okay, so that's what I've done here. This way is clockwise, this way is counterclockwise. Okay. So now, my net force on the system is going to be 98.1 newtons. Okay. Can I calculate the acceleration of both blocks? Because they accelerate together. 
Okay? Since they're attached and they're pulling on each other, they must move together. Okay, so I divide by the total mass. Okay, so 98.1 divided by 60. Okay, so this thing is going to accelerate at 1.635 or 1 1.6, because we only have two sig digs, 1.6 meters per second squared. Can I put a vector on that? This is the acceleration of the system. The parts of the system accelerate at 1.6 meters per second squared. One of the parts accelerates downwards. The other part accelerates upwards. So if it says calculate the acceleration of the system, you can't put a vector on it unless they both go the same way. I would ask this question this way to see how many people I could trick, because that's what I'm like. I would say, calculate the acceleration of the 25 kilogram mass. What would a lot of people do in this step differently? Yeah. They'd use the 25 kilogram mass. And basically then they're saying, the only part of the, the only mass in this system is 25. Well, that's gonna give me a lot different situation. Okay, whenever I'm calculating the acceleration of the system, I have to use the entire mass of the system. And there's lots of little tricks that go with systems that we have to remember. Okay, try that one. The fact that there are two pulleys changes nothing. Okay, it absolutely changes nothing. All it, all it does is, I mean, change the direction, I guess it does change something. It changes the direction that pale C moves versus pale B. Yeah. So the table's frictionless. Okay. Pale C um, is 6 kilograms. This one's 8 kilograms. And this is 20 kilograms. Okay. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. I would have said calculate the acceleration of the tire. Because again, I'm a jerk. Trick. All right, give that one a try. So, what are the forces that are pulling this system? Gravity, yeah. And? Gravity, right? It's, just, it's, it's the same force, but it's pulling essentially the system in different directions because one pail is resisting the other pail. Uh, so on this side here, we'll have 58.86 newtons, and on this side, 78.48 right. newtons. All right, so I've got um, those two forces, and they're acting on the whole system. So now I'm going to simplify this. I've got 34 kilograms worth of mass in my system. I've got 58.86 newtons resisting. I've got 78.48 newtons driving. All right, can I get my net force? All right, so F net's going to be 78.48 minus 58.86, which is 19.62 newtons. Right, now that I've got that number, now I can calculate the acceleration. F net over M, okay, so 19.62 over 34, which is what, point one point, no, sorry, point, uh, what, four something? I shouldn't do math in my head. Point five, uh, point five eight. Meters per second squared. That's all I can put because it asks what's the acceleration, what's the magnitude of the system's acceleration. If it asks about the truck tire, I'd say to the left. Okay. Is it always still the same two steps? 
I still have to do vector sum of all forces, but that step gets trickier and trickier and trickier the more complex the question becomes. And F equals M times A, that never changes. Okay, I'm either finding acceleration or I'm finding mass. Okay, um, one or the other. Okay, good job today. We'll pick up with more Newton stuff on Monday and look at doing a lab next week.